Hey everybody, welcome back to Stone Face Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here watching some Legend of the Galactic Heroes. We got some comments here today, so let's see what people got to say. We got just another Josh from the Patreon on the episode Armistar saying, I love the use of cephal particles here. We've been introduced to them as a deadly tool in close quarters combat used indoors. At this point of the original adaption, we'd have already seen Kirchis use them in space, but not quite to this scale. Flooding a minefield with those particles is a perfectly logical counter to the entire defense setup. Modern militaries have specialized mine clearing charges that launch a string of explosives to detonate a safe route through a minefield. This is the same concept, just on an infinitely larger scale. Logically, the Empire would already have tools for cleaning minefields that can be easily deployed. I just didn't expect them to quite be so massive in this, ad in this adaption. Although it does make sense. Also, the ED is full of so many spoilers, it's hilarious. Nothing obvious, as it's just still images, but lots of those images are from very important scenes much later in the series. It shocked me until I realized that they're not obvious without context. Oh, that, that one's going to drive Theta crazy for sure. Not really. I mean, that's the point. It, it, that's the point of it. Like, you don't know it's a thing until it happens. Which is why but you it got works. the future here, and you just have to look at it and go, what does it mean? <laughs> Not really. I never really speculate unless it's like something obvious, and if it's too mm -hmm. obvious, then it really is a spoiler, so not really dealing with it. But yeah, I, I also like the use of cephal particles here. It is a perfectly logical conclusion given what we've seen, and it doesn't seem to be an entirely new thing that exists. It's just that, oh, it's just a thing we decided to use in this way now, as opposed to, like, I think they said they were using it for mining before, weren't they? No. That's what the uh, Star Zone was being used for, not the mines. or uh, the, What not... were the cephal particles being used for before they were used to explode a control room? I thought they were just a weapon. It was a weapon thing. I don't think it was weaponized before. It's not even weaponized now, technically. Sure it is. They were telling us the moment we first saw them how they were used as weapons, or at least a, not so much a weapon, but as a way to prevent somebody else from using their weapons. Because mm -hmm. it would blow you up if you tried to fire. That's why we made the whole Dune comparison. Right, right. You, you could make an entire setting around that if you wanted, where it just mutually assured destruction or a sword fight. Uh, I think my I, thing I like is that in hindsight, that minefield was pointless. It forced them to do a thing that if they weren't prepared, they would have no What other did it force them to right? do? They backed up to the minefield already. The, the fleet, our, um, our, your guys, I should say, Yang's fleet, the whole fleet for the assault was backed up to the minefield. They literally said, our backs are to the wall. Mm. And we know that we're using laser weapons at long range. Literally, one, bombard the minefield, two, ignore the minefield, and just shoot the ships that are literally on the other they, side of it. They had their little defensive asteroid cluster. Nope, though. that was that in was front the of point. them, Griff. You, that was in front of them, not behind them. The backs <laughs> to the wall went, their backs were to the minefield. I they think said the thing that. we're asking here actually is effective range, then. What is the effective range of a spaceship in this setting? And the answer is, um, I'm not sure, actually. It doesn't, doesn't matter. We've seen it fire at further distances than what was there. Literally, the ships that are in front of them shooting at them are firing at a larger distance than the giant thing we brought in to destroy the minefield was. Literally, they, I don't at even... At some point indicate some ships have a longer range than others, and now my question is, what's the overall effective range on average? Can you actually shoot forever? I don't know these things. I think the answer, though, is you two, can't shoot forever. Two, well, two, one, you can't shoot forever because I believe it's covered before that energy lose, it loses energy. I can't mm -hmm. remember exactly where, but I got that on a Kirk Gazette video that a, a beam of energy traveling through space loses charge as it progresses light generally red shifts yeah but to the your argument still entirely pointless as i said before when the range doesn't matter because the ships in front of them are firing further than the <laughs> ships behind them need to fire literally all you the question i think you should be asking is how much how many mines did they lay 
and to the to create a maximum width of a minefield to have spanned such a distance and i say not enough mm-hmm. because also space is three dimensional let's we'll not ignore that for a second but the point it's being only thinking two dimensionally we can go up but the point being, this is Kirch's fleet that we've seen in two different engagements already in this battle. Not mm-hmm. this battle specifically, but the whole battle of the invasion. Kirch's took out the supply fleet. Kirch's takes out... Ah, shit, I can't remember because I can't look at the board now for it. But Kirch's takes on another guy... Oh, sorry, actually, Kirch's takes on Yang's fleet, which then escapes. But the point being... The distance of these things travel was not further than the minefield itself. Mm-hmm. Also, you could have just shot at the minefield. So, I think the entire point of that is that it's supposed to be this long, difficult thing. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a very no. Good it's minefield. literally the same idea as a uh, the mine thrasher, which uh-huh. is just a uh, thing which literally hits mines with like chain whips to set them off in front of a padded, not a padded, but, you know, an armored frontal thing. Literally, mm-hmm. instead of chains, we're using lasers, you know? It's... Right. So I guess it just comes back down to, like, how do all these weapons operate? Which, not that important to the you're series, asking, unfortunately. You right? are asking too many in-the-world questions, Griff. Exactly. None of, no, I'm saying your questions are wasting time. Literally, they're pointless. I know I would hate you. I know, that's what I just said. I would, no. You're, no, you keep asking them, though. I'm saying they're pointless. The thing is, is they just wanted to show off a giant, cool weapon. And I'm saying, cool. Giant, cool weapon was pointless, though. It's not like Isralon, which is like, here's a choke point. Giant, cool weapon is the reason it's a choke point. Well, that and the, the galaxy wall, apparently. That's still unexplained as well. All right, our next comment is from Justin O. Josh on the Patreon of the ep- uh, episode Demise of the Emperor, saying, I always love the asides of Runathal and Mittemeyer. They're not too plot relevant yet, but they're the two members of Reinhardt's fleet that you see more often than the others. Most of these scenes are the two of them just drinking together and discussing Reinhardt's actions. It helps us set up that they are more important than the rest of the group, even if they haven't done anything to stand out yet. At the same time, there are the two of Kirchi's mentions when he says he's working on a plan to deal with the nobles. They're more important, but the viewer doesn't know exactly how or why yet. You added the word more, or it wasn't before. Oh, whoops. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I do like them sitting, drinking, and commenting on others' actions, because it's good to have like a muse-type character in a larger story to help contextualize things. You need someone to guide you through it and say, like, this is the thing you should have been paying attention to, or this is the thing you should be as we are moving over here. Uh, and that's, like, kind of a classic trope. I like it. It's always fun for me. What about you, Theta? I mean, their asides are maybe point of view, but without the context of the eventual whatever's to come, I don't really have much to say about it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many characters in the show that they haven't had their moment to shine other than, say, when they were both reflecting upon uh, Kirchi's position in the organization way back when. Or maybe a, a time with Oberstein. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, not enough time to reflect on what the meaning of these are until, I guess, later. Right, this is a, another uh, we'll just have to come back later kind of moments. Uh, but I think with that, Theta, do we want to go to the board first? Oh, it is. that's how you do that. Is, is it? <laughs> Yeah, let's go to Segway. All right. So with this Segway, we are going over the board. And oh, would you look at that? Kaiser Frederick the Fourth is dead. Who would have ever guessed that? <laughs> uh, we do have a whole bunch of brand new characters stepping up. You have the two, the three families separated out here. You got A, B, and C, right? Well, you've thrown him into the family, and I don't think he is. 
Well, he well, he's in the group alongside them, right? They are friends, and that's the only other person he connects to right now, right? I mean, I guess I could draw a red line from him to uh, to Reinhardt, but I mean, they're not really. He hasn't done anything, as far as I can tell yet. Right, we have the context that they are in contest with each other to see who gets to sit down on the emperor's seat and who gets to be the voice behind the throne. But this episode is the one where they're going to be fighting, so we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, let's see, is there anyone else on the list who, like, uh, strikes me as very important? We did get reintroduced to a character who should be over on the left-hand side now. I'm not sure where our Federation captain is. Uh, where Don't did follow you mine, I'm following you yours. Go? I'm following your little hand thing around for the window to see where you land. Yeah, I gotta, like, zoom in and out all the time here, so I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out. I'll just remember uh, them by their faces. Uh, that's the thing. I'm really bad with everything about people. Uh, you did definitely move them to the left-hand side with the Empire, right? Who could you be talking about, Griff? The, the traitor. The one who's literally, uh, working with the Empire to start a revolution in the Federation, right? You do know how to read a, one of these things, right? I think we've done enough of these that you should be able to figure out the meanings behind the lines and everything, right? All so right, if you know clearly... that he's allied to the Federation, or he was related to anybody on one side or the other, you should be able to figure out why the lines connecting them. I feel like this one is very obvious, what you're looking for. I feel like maybe not so much. I will say, Griff, where was he when we saw him? Uh, he was in jail. No. Well, when we first saw him, yes, but not where we left him. All right, he was just hanging out on a random alliance planet with a whole group of people sure. talking about how they're going to start a revolution. If we count the capital of the alliance as a random alliance planet, then yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know where he, where is he? Is he this guy, Rear Admiral Arthur Lynch? You remember oh, that right. name at all? He is. He is here. He wasn't on the left hand side at all. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Where did we last see him? Also, what lines does he have connecting him? Does uh, he have this giant to the empire here? This giant green line that says ally, the only one, the only green line that crosses from the alliance to the empire. I didn't think that Reinhardt himself was, was in the room him. telling him what to do. I he thought it was a different character. Oberstein was there too, but I think it was Oberstein. Yeah, I guess I, I associate him more with Oberstein. I don't here. think that guy was Oberstein, in fact. But Reinhardt walks in. Him. No, I don't think so. I just said I don't think it was him. But Reinhardt yeah. walks into the room, slaps the red book on the table, says, "Follow that. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do." He says, "But I could die," and he says, "Then fucking die. Nobody cares what <laughs> happens to you." Is that enough of a reason to live? So I, yeah, he is currently within the Alliance. He is currently Green Line allied to Reinhardt. Alright, so here, here's one. You have a red line between him and Yang right now. I don't know. He hates Yang. You might remember he gets the coward of El Fasil because of what Yang did to the evacuation. But at the same time, like, he's constantly talking about getting Yang involved in his plan here, in his group. No, literally, he's cursing uh, Yang constantly because he blames <laughs> his lot for Yang's successful evacuation of El Fasil, where he constantly claims, I was just going for reinforcements, to which Reinhardt tells him, if that had worked in the last several years, then why did your own men give you a scar across your face? <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Arthur Lynch down as the biggest personal drama ongoing at this very second. Incorrect. Oh, who, who's who's more dramatic right now? Well, I have a whole thing of thought section. We'll get to that. But I have spent so much time, by the way, which is why I remember so fucking much right now. 
editing this and... board because we watched what three or four episodes. <laughs> no, you tell me what more so you see notice you noticed on this board. I spent so much time editing. Uh, that's a good question. I don't think we got any new characters last time, uh, aside from our... Aside from Admiral all Richard. of these other characters. He's not connected to his conspiracy group. He's just allied with the president and Reinhardt. He is. He totally is al uh, connected to his conspiracy group. What are you talking about? Where? He has three lines on him, doesn't he? Yeah, how many people do you remember being in the conspiracy group? Like they had a whole table of like twenty dudes. <laughs> yeah, how many of them None got of names? Them names. <laughs> no. Well, I have one question about that, but one of them was very specifically named. One of them was surprising to be there, named. So he's not. So whoever this person is, does is not connected to the rear admiral. Is not connected to Reinhardt. But is still there, and we I don't know who they are. Whoever this person is, he's got three lines on him, Griff. You've identified two of them. What's the president the th was not in that room. What? He's not? What, what are you talking about? Isn't that line connecting him up to the president right there? I keep following it up there. No, you can tell it's two different colors. The one that goes up to the president is in the dark green. The other one is a transparent green. It's so... that's so light. You have to uh, zoom in, Griff. That's all you can go. do. I'm going to make this more... There we go. We got a nice teal here. There we go. The Inspector General, Admiral Dwight Greenhill, who had dinner with Yang. Yeah, that was How's last that? season. <laughs> yeah, last season he had dinner with Yang, but now he is connected here. He's connected to Yang. I'll be honest, if I, didn't do, if I didn't do other sideways colors as well, I'd be afraid of how many accidental swastikas would be created by these boards. <laughs> uh, there's so many entangled lines. It's just There uh, are a lot of goes up, makes a hard right turn, which I guess is also the history of swastikas. But... <laughs> All right, but we have found our mystery inspector general who is going to pop up again and is our big alliance character to look at. But I think, as you noted last time, we're heading into the Empire bit and we're probably going to focus on them, right? I didn't say that. and I have no idea. In fact, I didn't. I don't now at this current moment do not remember which way the um, the end credits went last time, left or right, which is typically then, denoting which... No, but you tell me more changes to this board, Griff. We're not done what here. What more could be changed? Well, you I haven't mean, even I noticed guess. all the added characters either. What do you there mean, what more? else could be changed? How, do you remember what else happened to the Alliance last episode? Uh, oh, a whole bunch of them died, didn't they? <laughs> no, not last episode. They just got moved down here because I was running out of space. Yeah, geez, all right. Zoom out a little bit. Our entire death field here. Uh, so they are going to get replaced. So I guess like having space up here to like re-add their replacements is good. I don't know that they will be replaced. Fleets get merged. No new fleet's been created since the 13th. It's just going to be one big fleet under Yang and everyone's going to look at Yang and he's going to say it's like, but what if I don't want to go to war? Uh, so we got Haywood killed by Kirchis. Ah, oh, crap. He said somebody I forgot to connect with bars. I, I spent so much time. He's he's here, though, and now he's gone. That's what, Those were more of my notes to remember to connect people with lines. I don't remember when Malcolm died. You read a comment last episode we watched. I guess so. I guess I missed it. Uh, Gene Robert Lapp, more... Uh, oh, killed in battle with Cornelius Lutz right here. Again, another one I forgot to connect. And if, if there's a uh, colored note underneath it, that's me remembering so I remember where to put them later. It's very helpful. We have two of the pilots who died, which uh, kind of came and went pretty quickly. And then three more admirals. Uh, killed in battle with Blitzenfield. Biddenfield. Uh, one, two, three. Blitzenfield is some weird combo five. of uh, reindeer. An admiral. 
Uh, no, I, okay, so I think that's five admirals who died in that entire fight, right? No. Nope. I think this was like episode one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but that's not an admiral, that's a vice admiral. Oh, okay. So that is five vice admirals down, five fleets gone out of what do we start with? 13? Are you counting Peta? Uh, am I? Yes. Well, then, no, that's also episode one or two. All right, four. Four, then. <laughs> Four fleets starting off of like twelve. That is a thirty percent loss rate. No, well, remember, it could have been worse. Some of the fleets weren't there either. Some of them are also bigger than others. We don't have like the specific stats on those. No, I mean like the first fleet wasn't there, so mm. it couldn't have gotten lost. Right. Still, doesn't look great, but it is the almost failure everyone was looking for, wasn't it? The only person unhappy from last time was Siegfried. And we know why he was unhappy, because he wanted to win. He's the only person who wanted to win. Uh, which I think that is actually a good segue into Theta's thoughts. Ah, I guess I'll just cover this myself. You didn't cover any of the people who got retired last episode. Oh, they moved down here. I guess they did, yeah. The entire council the is The fact gone. that Job is the acting uh, government authority for the entire alliance now. The fact sure. that... All of these people got promotions, and now they're higher up. Yang is now commander of Iserlorn, which has now all these direct people underneath him. Mm -hmm. The fact that this guy over here on the Federa uh, Federation, the uh, Empire, retired. The fact that uh, you know Reinhardt's sister is down here now. Oh yeah, Reinhardt's sister got saved, but other I that was fucking we covered Theta's box. Other fucking new guy on the board. You know, bright blue against the white background thought it would be obvious. Oh, right. I kind of got distracted in the where is the traitor listed kind of deal. I forgot about the mysterious voice of the Cardinal or what? Wait, let me zoom in. What's his name here? The Bishop. Oh, that's 800%. That's a little too much. Grand Bishop. Do you not use your mouse wheel? Uh, after a certain point, after I start changing tools, the mouse wheel no longer zooms in and out. Oh, well. Wow. Which is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> See, I don't change tools that much. I think I use just the, uh, the text, the line, pointer, and hand. I've got a John Madden this. <laughs> so, we have this mysterious blue force who's telling us about Earth, right? I'm gonna draw a nice Earth right here. Here we go. That's Europe, and we have, like, an Africa over there. What's the moon with one balloon for some reason? Uh, you know, sometimes it's like a balloon. There's, like, a Japan, and there's, like, a China there. There we go. Pretty nice Earth, right? So, last time, these two were talking about this Earth. Uh, As opposed to that other Earth. So I guess the question is, Theta, are you ready to add in a fourth faction before we get more than four characters for the third one? <laughs> or, or is this actually all, this is their same faction? Unknown. Unknown. No, that is, that's right. So pretty sweet earth there, and it's going to go away. I'm trying to remember the context of it. What did they expect was going to happen? That, like, they hear about Earth and everyone is going to try going straight forwards? No, everybody knows about Earth. Or... We covered Earth, like, in Season 1, with a history of the Empire. Right, okay, so the Empire has the Earth. There's a cult about the Earth going around in the Alliance territory. The thing is, except for the cult, no one gives a shit about the Earth. Yeah, it's kind of just not here or there for anybody else, is it? We co Again, we covered it in the Empire's uh, backstory thing that only like a certain type of people wanted to stay on Earth. Everyone else just yeah. left. Doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. Earth is irrelevant. Except apparently for the Grand Bishop, who's going to come back with a cult. Uh, so this guy, I'm going to say, is probably over in Alliance territory. He is actively over there, and he's actively doing things, and he's just communicating back over to here. What do you think? I have no clue. Honestly, 
I mean, this isn't like one of my exasperation moments. This is like, I have no evidence to suggest anything. Right, nor do no I know. Nor do I know him. any motivation or anything else to describe why he would be anywhere. I got it. So this is the Stargate crossover. So, he's actually one of the Ori, and he's gonna come in and start building the network to connect this galaxy to the other one. What you should have done was puff your hair up and just gone aliens. That's kind of what I'm doing all the time here, but. <laughs> I think that finally covers the board, then. So, Theta, what's on your mind? No, I will say at least not enough to make me happy for the amount of effort that I've put into it. Armistar was the site of Imperial asteroid mining that was abandoned. That's why there was scaffolding and such on all those bits of what looked like a moon. Okay, that checks out, then. I think we were really curious about why that was before. During the encirclement, Reinhardt says in, ex sorry, in exasperation that Bittenfield's failures always ruins things for him. Sorry, for them. Mm -hmm. Implying that despite him being in the inner circle, he is a known fuck-up. Which I guess means that Reinhardt wasn't just recruiting men of ability, but also p just people he could trust. Right, and uh, earlier in the series, who he could trust was more important of a factor, I think. Uh, but I feel like he's also getting a bad rap, right? I don't think he's completely incompetent. He, like, made one mistake or two, and now that's his entire personality, right, for Reinhardt. It's like, that's the guy who makes mistakes, and I need perfection. He said failures in the plural. Right. But given what we've seen of him, I feel like maybe he's just getting a bad rap for being a little bit too gung-ho. Failure is in the as plural. Bad or incompetent as some of the alliance guys that we've seen in the past, who are just utterly terrible. Failures in the plural, and he says he they always make he they always have to pay for them, which yeah. implies that they're not meaningless failures. That they're in, they're they are consequential failures. And that's exactly what I'd expect someone to say in a moment of anger while they're alone with their best friend and just talking shit about the person who just made a mistake. Yeah, I I would expect that sort of language. I wouldn't expect that to necessarily always extrapolate. There's a difference between being flippant and being accurate. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he was being inaccurate, despite being flippant. Mm -hmm. uh, what else you got? It does feel like the Imperial fleets, despite being higher tech than the Alliance, are old and storied. They have, uh, that they have all these embellishments as a result of that. Like when uh, Eugen says that Biddenfield cannot sacrifice himself for his duty, as someone needs to report back, and doing so would end the history of that fleet. Ah, yeah, there you go. The extra... The extra little bit behind the Empire where it's like, oh yes, that's right, my honor and reputation do matter more than just this one fight, don't they? I was indicating more to the fact that why we keep saying that the uh, Imperial ships are so ornamental in their nature is that they're yeah. old. Like, I don't know, like having a famous ship tied to a, to a port or something. Oh, that's, you know, that's Sandre's port. It's famous for the the flying whatever, you know. Yeah, are you going to be the guy who gets the famous ship sunk? Do you want to be the guy who accidentally blew up the Hindenburg? Or... <laughs> I don't know why Job was appointed head of the intern government just for voting against the war. There were members of the committee doing a good job in trying to stabilize the alliance that also voted against the war, that also resigned and didn't get brought back. I I guess what I got from it was that everyone else was seen as supporting the war in some way, and Job managed to keep himself uh, on message enough to not get associated with it. And so when the bad things happened, he could say, I'm perfectly innocent of all this. Everyone else resigns because of reputation, and he doesn't because he has no shame. I think you're incorrect about that. And now he's the he one literally the Minister of the Infrastructure. That was going on and on about lacking people and actively were trying to bring people, technicians and such, back from the war, back uh -huh. to 
you know, civilian jobs and everything where they were needed, also voted against the war. He literally did everything that you just said the job possibly did to maintain his position, but he didn't get his position back. Right, because job is about politics. He is a person who entirely is manipulating his perception to the public. I expected him to win that exchange, is what I'm saying. Again, it wasn't an exchange, though. He li Job manipulated things to put himself where that other guy was. And that mm -hmm. other guy didn't come back. Maybe he just got fired for traffic violations. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something... <laughs> I got no other explanation other than make shit up now. Kind of funny that they so willingly allowed an Imperial delegation to just come to Iserlan considering that they know that they were able to take the planet with just four guys themselves. Yeah, but I guess at this point it would be more of a, we are expecting them to be here, we're going to go ahead and clear them of their weapons, we're going to search them, we're not just going to assume like, oh yeah, they're just four dudes and we're going to let them walk in. They also don't take them to the command center, they go to like an event hall. No, that was the command center. Also, they searched the four dudes that they brought last time too and mm -hmm. weapons checked them and everything else that you just said and they still took the place uh well at least they went to the event hall instead of the command room it's the same room no it's not it's the same room it's a giant they room they had to leave the command room to go and see them <laughs> those are different rooms I'm pretty sure it's the same room Nope. <laughs> anyway, what else is on your mind? Well, I love every argument. They could just be ended with no. What? What? What else are we gonna do? Just like go yes, no, back and forth. Well, I haven't one have not gotten yet to yaha. So, well, I and the will dog still continue to say no. -uh. <laughs> and the dog dares haven't even started in this conversation yet, man. You got to go through protocol. <laughs> Ah, you're right. Mm, I'm skipping pages. We didn't spend years on the playground not to follow protocol, Griff. Ah, uh, how can I forget my roots like that? Anyway, what else is on your mind? We know that the Dominion still has its fingers in the food-generating sectors of both factions, and the Alliance might be facing a coup d'etat from Imperial agents slash Greenhorn and or whatever job is up to and that the royal family and Reinhardt are about to come to blows. Not sure where the church comes into play as a possible fourth faction, given that it has control over the Dominion leader and essentially cultists on the ground in the Alliance. I doubt there is much a need for the church in the Empire, considering that that is where Earth is, and they would just be there slash have it already. It wouldn't be a Holy Roman Empire analog without a holiness to it, right? There, there's got to be something. I don't think it's a Actually, whole, I don't think it's an analog at all. Remember, um, back in the Castrop Rebellion, some planets just have themes. Like Castrops yeah. was like French uh, Renaissance. Yeah. All right. So here's like another thing, like side by side to pop culture in your fictional piece is hard to get across. I think additionally, what are the current religious beliefs of the entire galaxy, planet for planet, is a detail that is far beyond what I would ever expect any author to ever write for a story that is about two dudes fighting a war that is not about religion. <laughs> you saying pop culture is hard to get across in fiction like this just makes me remember that I'm watching him across and I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about anymore, considering that's literally just pop idols singing the war away. So, right, but that's that's the point of the story. Then that's like that's front and center. But like, if we go over to say like uh, Gundam Seed, where it's like, all right, we have this universe, and our one pop cultural touchstone in that universe is that there's one person who sings really well, and they're also rich, and that's all we know, and that they're totally okay with like very like nice slow peace songs. I guess <laughs> it's hard to get across an entire culture and all of their artifacts and things that are popular currently to them when you're just writing a story. Well, I mean, I would say that, like, with Macross, that's important to Macross, because as you said, that's mm -hmm. the point of the story, but at the same time, it's not important here. Yeah. 
So there's no point well, to. I mean, I don't care. Yeah, I think I'm losing. It can be important on religion. I think I'm losing the point of what your point was anymore. Okay, my point is that all right, we have a religious figure, someone who is calling themselves a grand bishop, and there's a cult being formed. And I have to ask, what does everyone else believe, and how does, and how are how is the grand bishop's argument going to play for or against or with those current beliefs? Does everyone in the universe still like believe in default Christianity or something? Is there a space pope around? Do we have a space Buddha? I don't know what's going on. It seems generally nobody has had an opinion yet so far in the entire series. So there hard hasn't to say been, how it's gonna land with everyone. There hasn't been, to my recollection, a single cross mm -hmm. in every or any episode. Wait, yeah. never mind. I don't think we've seen a graveyard even, have we? we I think we must have. So, you know, wow, that many dead people? There has to be some sort of like Arlington analogy thing going on. I, I think I'm just thinking of another series where I'm thinking like, oh right, don't we have like a war memorial somewhere? It's like, no, I think that's like 86. Yeah, that's my problem is I'm trying to think back to I know I've seen grave like mass grave not mass grave mass graveyard yeah <laughs> difference between a mass grave and a mass graveyard um a large one yeah a massive graveyard some might say i could have sworn i could have sworn we've seen these characters there but maybe i'm it's too many shows <laughs> there we go so yeah no um we don't have any other context to any sort of religious culture happening in this entire series, I, and we're about to get blasted with I this. don't think we need it, though, because we have how the characters react to the cultists, which mm -hmm. kind of implies how they would react to anything else. Yeah. And the fact that Yang is never like, well, we got church on Sunday, or, you know, he doesn't say anything like, did you do, your, you know, did you do your studies, or... No, no one says a line like "God would never allow this weapon to exist" or something. You know, no one's done anything poignant like that either. It kind of feels almost like when we left Earth and the Empire was founded, or what, I can't remember the Feder was it the Federation mm -hmm. before it was the Empire? Yeah, like we got rid of religions, and then when the Alliance split off from the Empire, they didn't like just create a new religion or anything. So they, like everyone has just kind of like not done it, and it's like okay, that'd be fine. I just wanted his text, and that this I earth, know this that's earth religion might just be that whole, you know the the God, what's it called? What's the last book of the Bible? Uh, Revelations. It might just be the whole Revelations multi church thing that all the all the religions of old Earth. It's just one religion now, and that's what the Grand Pope is. Mm hmm. So, can't wait to see the Pope, but Theta, what else is on your mind? We've often said that Reinhardt is different because he wants to win, but we've gotten multiple scenes now of Gang shrugging off those thoughts, at least once at the end of the first season, and then when they are discussing the Imperial infiltration plan, Bocock points out that it sounds like Gang figured out what Reinhardt was doing because he may have been considering the same thing himself. Hmm... I, I guess maybe there needs to be a broader text, like, parallel between Yang and Reinhardt, because currently they are, we, we've been constantly talking about, like, they are very different characters and people, right? Literally at the end of the first season, Yang is looking off in the distance and says, huh, what about winning? So, yeah, again, what I'm just said right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of accurate on that. Uh, what else you got? I guess this is a question for the commenters when they see this, because I'm not sure right now. Was Falk one of the spies? There was a guy in the crew that looked a bit like him and was questioning why they even needed Yang, which would be right in line for with what Falk would say. I'm not certain, though. Ah, uh, good question. I swear there has to be at least one other character there that's supposed to be recognized, but I just don't remember that. You who did not remember that Green Hill was even there. Exactly. Sorry, that was the chuckle from before where you said, I think we're right on par with that. 
me who's been watching his three his three episodes like six times now. It's done so much work <laughs> on the board and I've committed so much memory space to the the interminglings of how everything works. You've written your fifteen page thesis on the show and I'm just going like, oh yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, yeah, just co-sign me on the bottom but of what that. Else? <laughs> no, no, yours is more, yours isn't like that's obvious. Like okay, yours is more like, yeah, I'll co-sign that. <laughs> I did all this work. But what if it was our work? <laughs> what else you got? That was the last one. Alright, in that case, I think we are ready to go ahead and go over the recap, because the last time was before the storm, where a deal is reached to exchange all of the prisoners taken with the Free Planet Alliance Navy conquered Iserland Fortress, and by the Galactic Imperial Navy during the Battle of Armistar. Didn't we so, say that already? Uh, no, we have another recap. This is now me saying it. So that's what happened last time. That's the context of what was happening. Uh, but what was actually happening is a, a lot of spies infiltrating the Alliance. Uh, two different revolutions happening at the same time. And now also Space Pope. As, as we have discussed before. We got a lot of stuff set up and something's got to happen. Uh, and I gotta ask, Theta, what's the worst thing you can imagine happening right now to, like, a character? I don't know, Who has, like, drop? the worst destiny here? Did we do one of those things where I was talking and you couldn't hear me again? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why we talk over top for the audience, that's why we talk over top of each other sometimes. Neither of us hears one another when we're talking. Uh, so what do you think, then? I said colony drop. Colony drop. All right. So do we even have... No, we definitely have space stations that big. We've definitely seen them. They do exist. They it built a, a fucking planet, Griff. So, so let's paint the narrative. Cultists gain access to one of these stations and then threatens to drop it if they don't get what they want. The revolution goes poorly, so they drop the colony and they do it while drinking the Kool-Aid. That would be hilarious. Uh, What else we got? Any, any other actual theories going into this Theta? I had a whole Theta's thoughts section. This is where you say your theories, Griff. <laughs> I mean, I think I kind of outlined it, too, while we were talking. We've been over the space pope. Oh, back to the co-signing thing, are we? Yeah, exactly. So we've been on the space pope. We got to figure out what their angle is here. Maybe they're in the alliance. Maybe they'll pop up. And maybe once the revolution happens, we'll have our fourth faction in play. And things will just go absolutely crazy. So I'm kind of expecting that to happen. But we are going to get at least one revolution today. Maybe the second next time. Uh, so, I guess with that, let's just go ahead and watch our revolution happen. But before we do, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as normally access stuff, you can go ahead and follow us over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. Click the link down below, join the Discord. Let me know, who is your favorite character? Jessica, right? Yeah. I was almost confused for a second when it said Country of Mary and Dorf. I'm just like, wait a second. I thought it said County. Uh, I thought it said Country. I thought but it if said... it's an alliance of free planets, this is an individual free planet, right? I thought it said County, and I was going to say you're doing pretty... Nope. That's... Oh, Hildegard von Mariendorf. Yeah, it does sound like an Empire name, so that makes more sense. No, I was about to say, you're doing pretty well for yourself if your county is a whole planet. Yeah. Our entire voting district counts for exactly one point out of five billion in this a lot. I'll this be, uh, I will be honest, though. I thought it was one more additional person that I didn't get the chance to voice. I thought that was <laughs> the uh, transport uh, councilman that retired. Gosh, I kind of missed their face entirely. <laughs> No, see, well, I thought it was her based on the back, so. 
<laughs> so I didn't, uh, then I thought, no, wait, this is probably Jessica, because I think I said last time we haven't seen Jessica in a while, and the political stuff's rolling out, so be about oh, time yeah, for her. Time. Oh, 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 fun theory. What if she becomes a revolutionary leader? And then Yang has to choose between either, like, staying where he is and not being labeled a traitor, or joining with Jessica and fighting for what's right, but having to start a fight, which he doesn't want to do. We've never met this woman before. Alright, I mean, I would just po post it up a random theory. No, no, I understand that. I was listening. I would just... That was that sounded more like a hypothetical to the audience more than me because I have no way in. I have that's another. Yeah. I have no idea. I was spending that time looking up the the board. Oh yeah. I don't know. Who, this is another person we've met before. Lovely view though. Oh, Oh wait, no. He's dead. This is the past. Oh, wow, okay. He's on the board. He is on the board. Yeah. Franz von Mariendorf is the finance minister. Castrop kills. <laughs> the board came into play. マリンドルフ家の未来が大したことではないとおっしゃるのは王人で暮らしていると嫌でも耳に入ってきますわ貴族たちはみんなどちらに着くか噂をしていますand if this somehow does not turn out to be the past, and they're going back on what they've shown, I'm going back to the board, and I'm showing you all this picture that I've got of Franz von Mariendorf on his knees, about to get shot by Kastrop. Oh, how things go wrong. Or somebody in the Kastrop Rebellion. Always being listened to. の ゴールデンバウム王朝は、500年近く続きました。その間、歪んだ権力構造のうちで人々を支配し、富と権力を欲しいままにしてきました。人を殺すことも、竹の娘を奪うことも。そんな権力が、ゴールデンバウム王朝
I swear to God, they said at some point that they executed the finance minister and then showed him as the finance minister. それゆえ、he has the people behind him. There we go. Good argument. Well, I mean, I already know that. Yeah. I don't mean like that last episode, the whole ploy of giving us back the 200, uh, the 2000, 20,000 um, prisoners of war was to have the army of 20,000 people who, you know, put their fate into his hands. Right, exactly.私どもも知人演者を説得しやすくなります。何? We want to own our stuff. All right. Cool文書。はい。よかろう。教授に文書にしてお渡ししよう。ありがとうございます。マリンドルフ家は閣下に対して絶対の忠誠を誓います。ところで古いラインマリンドルフ。あなたが説得してくださる他の貴族たちに対してもand that's what all falls apart when we introduced capitalism to the empire. <laughs> it's what the space pope wanted all along. Uh, never mind, she blinked. Hi. And that's the first time she relaxed in literally the entire episode. Probably about a whole week since she talked to her father. Nainhart to Richtenra de Ko no Sujikuni Taiko Suru, Kizok Tachinga Keshushi, Meyakuo Kawashita. Meshua, Brown. We don't need a second alliance. Fukumeshua, Rittenheim Ko, Wilhelm. Sankashita Kizokua, Sansen Nanahak Yonjume, Sono Heliokua. Does that work so well in the past before? Numbers. Or as SAO would say, Link start. <laughs> That's the guy I was talking about before. That you couldn't remember. That our retired guy was friends with. Oh, right. Or at least had a shared respect for. You might not remember because it was literally five seconds of one episode. Yeah. I mean, literally five seconds they share a land. See him. Look, they're hey. doing it now. They're being friends. Look at that. <laughs> That's how much I'm paying attention, Griff, which is why I'm so thrown by Franz being alive. <laughs> Man, I love it when World of Warcraft ripped this off. <laughs> Might be joking. Oh gosh. The, 
I'd ask you for more, but we'd be here for a while. It's World of Warcraft. I can't remember names. That one orc that was a slave, and he retires, and then another orc that's the leading the horde at the moment comes back to get him to come back to help everyone else. It's fucking this. It's this scene. <laughs> よくもまあそのようなことを我らを愚弄しているミュッケンベルはもう置いたかだいたい勝手に動いてもらってはこまる名手である私が前線の指揮を取る以上名手自ら前線へおいでになるのはいかがなものかそう司令官にはやはり
I've waited 20 years to get that lady out of that house. You are not going to do this. すると、刑の忠誠心はどういう判断によって刑が年来の主君を見捨てることを許したのだ。忠誠心というものがその価値を理解できる人物に捧げられるものです。抜け抜けというやつだ。いいだろう。オーベルシュタイン、お前の配下
He literally that covered that last episode. Okay, and he's back in Regency again, so it was just for show. No, remember, like, two episodes ago, an episode ago, he was given that position. Mm-hmm. What do we write in the books? Call them the traitors. Call them those other rebels. Call them the Injustice Lords. No one sees that before. He actually just went with the traitors. Ah, oh, there you go. Just using the weight of your cloud. It's like, no, that ain't your name. I mean, call them traitors. Just seize all their holdings and everything, right? Uh, not if they're flying ships over them. <laughs> but I think it's the entire point right now. Well, odds this are they don't have ships over battle. all of their holdings. Well, at least half of it will. No, I remember the Alliance shit's part of their plan, too. They even said that this episode. Okay, fair, fair. I'm, I'm just not assuming that part is going to work. I mean, you assume they're going to fail, why don't you assume they're going to completely fail? Oh, hey, it's the opening shot. I was so involved that it felt like There's... almost no time was passing. There's... There were so many wheels turning, I can't actually keep up with all of it. Well, no, I got totally thrown by the first part where Franz is still alive. <laughs> yeah, that just knocked you entirely off the game to begin with. Because I'm paying attention to everything so, so carefully that the one thing that I didn't think I had to worry about dead people coming back to life not was... only that an incidental character not a, like a main character dies and come back because that would that would make you angry i've seen that before but this character coming back has specifically confused you well it's because i never it's like with what's his name uh the guy the traitor guy from last episode that you were couldn't figure out was on the board right yeah yeah i don't so much care about him coming back because it didn't seem like he was important and ultimately, they never really clarified if he was captured or dead or anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, he never showed up on screen before, right? He never showed up yeah. on screen and got a name under him. It was him, just so... mentioned. Yeah. So it's like, okay, cool. He's back. I didn't care. This guy, I'm pretty damn sure they said he was killed in the Castrop Rebellion. <laughs> it didn't show it above his thing, but he is the finance. He was the finance minister. Hmm. I guess that's oh, the boy. symbol of your fleet. Yeah, we, we don't even go straight to the fight next time. We go to Yang assembling his fleet and showing up. Everything is going to be at war at the same time. Well, I think your fleet is still the... I, I wrote it down. Hold on. It's on the board. You know, I'm just going to bring up the board here for the end, so... Sure. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, too far. I'm in the Dominion. Former 13th Fleet. See, I didn't, under, I didn't know since he was commander of the Ice Throne Fortress if the 13th Fleet was still his, so I put former down. Yeah. But yeah, he's the remains of the 2nd, 4th, 6th, and 10th Fleets are all the 13th Fleet. Right, so he's he's got like a, a random assemblage of all the ships then. Well, one uh, might assume also the other fleets that are no longer with us are all now under the 13th fleet, which just means that 
any fleet we haven't seen in operation and lose mm -hmm. would now just be part of the 13th. That, that's probably a pretty reasonable idea right there. And then you just put everything on the defensive front and bam, there you go. You're good. Um, so yeah, he's going to take all of them and... Okay, my assumption is he is going to have to rally his fleet in order to go deal with the uh, rebellions that are going to happen in the Free Planet Alliance. But Theta, do you have a different idea or do you like agree with that? What do you mean? Based on facts? Kind of based on the way things are going. Like he's not going to assemble and then go over to Reinhardt and go, it's like, I'm actually fighting against your, against No, you? I mean, the what facts are what Green, uh, Green Hill's plans are. Mm hmm. Um, then how does that change it? What do you see he Yang doing? Well, here? Green Hill's plan is to cause uprising on military bases along the frontier. That's the mm -hmm. first step of his plan. Okay. Uh, military so then, uprisings along the uh, military base along the frontier in alliance territory. He's causing basically a rebellion within the alliance on yeah. with military personnel. So then you agree that Yang is going to assemble fleet to deal with those military base uh, rebellions? Well, I don't know, because the name of the episode is uh, Yang mobilizes his fleet, right? And mm -hmm. whereas this is multiple uprisings across multiple planets. Which means yeah. you wouldn't want to mobilize one fleet. You need to mobilize fleets. Right. Still, this is definitely the most confusing scenario we have here, where every single thing is in motion across an entire galaxy. And we have a cast of... Theta, how many characters do you think this is, just that we're looking at here? I don't know. I. You know, I actually, hold on. I've got a folder on my computer here called uh -huh. characters specifically for this show oh. that has 25.2 megabytes i was hoping it would have a number it what? would definitely have a number of files in it it has 86 files in it uh do you have only one picture per character yep 86 characters, an entire galaxy in conflict, multiple individual alliances that are shifting, and with people changing sides and having chains of hearts in the middle of the episode. Also, keep in mind, more characters were introduced this episode, so it's more 86 plus. Yeah, and now we also have more. Great show, really deep and complex, lots of stuff going on. Uh, but man, is it actually just, uh, reaching my limit of like how far I can actually read into a story on a huge cast level. It's like at some point I'm going, I'm already forgetting people. How much further can we go before I'm just like, it's either Yang or Reinhardt or other for me? <laughs> I mean, we're well past my ability. Oh, I know yeah. I'm correcting you constantly and telling you everything. Yeah, yeah, I just assumed you were better than me here. I've got a headache. I'm I'm hurting. This is painful. I'm past my limit, but I'm Solid. somehow still maintaining. Again, if it's not if it wasn't for the board and the constant work I do on the board, mm -hmm. I probably would not know. I really this would be this would be a high card for me. I would just be like, I don't know what the hell's going on. People no, begin, I heard we knew what was going on, and that's why we knew it was terrible. <laughs> people would be getting angry in the comments, you're not fucking paying attention. It's like, I would be doing gags where I take, like, a ketchup packet and rubbing it underneath my nose pre-recording, so I'm just bleeding out and trying to remember shit. Alright, here's what I would go ahead and pose, like, any commenter. Tell us how you watch this, uh, your first time, and how many people you actually remember? Like, was there any point where you went, no, this is too much? I don't think that... That's what I want to know. I like the interaction you're trying to play here, but I don't think that pulls out well, because yeah. they can, on their watching, watch it you know, as many times as they want, pause, whatever. Mm. We're obligated to watch it as it's going. And I know right. I do the, the rewatches to pick out names, take screenshots of characters, make sure I got the board laid out right. But uh, yeah. but it'd be interesting to hear their experiences anyway. So, of course, uh, create more engagement for us. Post down below. <laughs> uh, so, Theta, 
I, I'm definitely solidly confused, or you solidly confused. Are you ready for what's next? I'm not confused. It's just, well, maybe I am just a slight bit. What's his name I here? Uh, I don't know why they uh, they uh, seem to have arrested Klaus, but then again, he's right there again in the regent position that he was given last time. But then in that same scene, they gave um, Reinhardt the the title he got the previous episode. They gave it to him twice right. for no reason. And right. I have no um, idea why they arrested these two that he put, kept in the position himself. It's like, what? He just, maybe he just wanted to do himself. All right, here's my theory for how it goes. Uh, so this kid, uh, Erwin, has been chosen to continue the Golden Bomb dynasty. So everyone working for him, including uh, Regent Klaus uh, and the two fleet admirals, are in fact a part of the Golden Bomb dynasty. Reinhardt, who is looking to create his own dynasty by getting rid of the old one, which was indicated at the beginning where uh, our new character was like, hey, governments die. We're starting a new one. Uh, Reinhardt has to go through the steps of arresting everyone a part of the previous one and then going, are you with me now? He's talked with Klaus before. He's already good with Klaus. He didn't talk with the fleet admirals. He wanted to get rid of them. So this is just him going through the process of going like, I am in charge now. This is a new government. Swear you're loyal to me or I am arresting you further. I knew you were wrong in the first breath. This oh, yeah. is why I stared down for a bit, knowing that I, <laughs> the polite thing to do would be to let you finish so you could explain it to the audience what your thought was. That all falls apart for me when we when we finish that entire thing, and then and Erwin is back on the throne, giving him titles and such, and the regent is back beside him because mm -hmm. what you're suggesting is is that he destroyed the Goldblum dynasty and then put it back on the throne. Kurt created a new dynasty, but with the same person. Yeah, no, that part's kind of weird. Isn't it? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I instantly knew problem? where you were going and why that didn't make any sense. And at least it doesn't make sense for the same reason why I'm confused why he arrested him in the first place. Because he, he arrests him and then says, how's the plan going? And he goes, without a hitch. And it's like, okay, so this is part of the plan. This was part of the plan but somehow. But why right? did you do it? Because, like, nothing changed. It's like, I arrested everyone, and then let them go. For kicks. So, I don't think we're going to get a good answer to that until we get a commenter here for that. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and end off on one funny idea, and that is, uh, do you think they had to arrest Erwin with, like, handcuffs, or did they just, like, lock his door and ground him? They didn't Irwin? arrest him. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't remember, because remember, even when they were coronating, coronating him, they were like, and just for... The br uh, for brevity and for the sake of his age, they made it go really fast. Like, everyone's, like, just catering to him. He's just a fucking kid. Yeah, I'm, sure the guess... I'm sure he didn't even live anywhere near where all this shit happened. Yeah, I guess overall everyone is going, it's like, let's not be cruel to the kid for no reason who obviously doesn't want to be here. <laughs> oh, that that's fair. Alright, so I think on that note... That's where we're going to go ahead and leave off for the day. This has been Stoneface Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See you around. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?